Hi, everyone. My name is Kathy Fromm. I am an event specialist with Who's Front of Viking, and I'm here today on Facebook to show you more about decorative stitches. So I'll give everyone just a minute to come on in and grab a seat and grab a beverage and uh, sit down and enjoy the next hour with me. I want to thank my behind the scenes crew um, that are keeping me going here. Um, Ryan, Meredith, and Amy. Thanks a bunch, guys. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So today our topic is decorative stitches. And I have some different notions I'm gonna share with you, some different techniques for different fabrics on different machines. We're gonna start off with our J20 machine. And let me go ahead and swap cameras here. There we go, there's our beautiful J20 machine. This is one of our entry level uh, electronic machines in our Husqvarna Viking line. It has 80 stitches. It has about um, eight inches of space in the throat area from the uh, needle to the inside of the edge here. So there's a lot of working room and it has a nice assortment of stitches. Some of the things I enjoy uh, using the J20 for are, are just basic sewing. It does not have embroidery. So this is a great sewing machine. It packs up um, very nicely. Um, it's very modular. The, hood closes and then a piece fits in here and it locks in place. There's a handle. It's all ready to go. Easy to take with you to classes. So that's our J20 machine. So I'm going to start on that machine first. All right. So I know you can't see me, but I'll have to spin around here to show you some things. So if at any time you have questions, please put them in the chat. And our behind the scenes crew will uh, take care of messaging them forward to me. All right. So at the top, you can see all of our stitch selections right here. They start at 10 and go to 81. The basic utility stitches on this machine are right in the front. So if you just want to do some um, regular construction sewing or perhaps some mending or a quick hem, you might use these uh, quick stitches right on the front of the machine. So before we can get started on sewing, we're gonna talk a little bit about threads, um, stabilizers, and needles. So I'm gonna start with needles. For decorative stitching, an embroidery needle is a great needle to use. Um, there we go. And the embroidery needle has a little bit of an elongated eye and that reduces the friction of the thread as it goes through the needle. Some decorative stitches are, stitches are dense, so that friction um, can increase when you're running a lot of thread through the needle at one time. And that needle makes the job a lot easier to do. Now, there's another needle that I like as well, and that's the top stitch needle, and I'll explain that one in a moment. Today for thread, I'm going to be using Robeson Anton 40 weight rayon thread. So I have a, I've already got my machine threaded with a green, but here's, a, here's another spool. So it's a nice, shiny, reflective thread. It makes everything stand out very nicely. And a 40 weight rayon thread, um, I typically use an 80, a size 80 embroidery needle for it. However, there are a lot of other threads out there in the world and you might want to experiment with some of the heavier top stitching threads that will that may be available at your local retailer or mass merchant. If you go with a heavier thread, like a 30 weight or um, heavier thread, you may want to switch off to the top stitch needle. The reason being is the top stitch needle has a larger eye and it's designed to accommodate a heavier thread or in the case of running two threads together, uh, it's a great needle for that. Just a bit more room for the thread to uh, pass through. All right, so we've talked about thread on top. Now for the bobbin, when doing decorative stitching, I prefer to put a 60 weight embroidery bobbin thread. Now I'm not doing embroidery, but 60 weight bobbin thread is primarily designed for embroidery work or heirloom work. This happens to be a polyester, so it's shiny and I filled a bobbin with this thread. The purpose is it's a lightweight thread. So I have a 40 weight on top and a 60 weight on the bottom. 
the 60 weight is thinner, so the tension is going to pull down just a little bit because it is a thinner thread. What that's going to do, it's going to make the top of my stitching look better. So I did a little stitching earlier. So I did a little satin ball here. This is the top side. And on the back side, you can see just a little bit of the green showing through. That's a good thing. I want that thinner, lighter weight thread to pull my top thread to the back. That just makes my top thread and my stitches look so nice. All right. So we've covered thread and we've covered um, thread for top and bob, bobbin and our needles. Now what about a foot? Well, I'm not sure what foot um, I might want to use, so I'm going to ask my sewing machine what foot to use. I am going to select a decorative stitch from my panel and let me pick. There's so many to choose from. How about if I pick, oh, 37. So on the jade to enter a stitch pattern, I just enter the numbers three and seven quickly and then it'll show up here in the display 37. But that doesn't tell me what foot to use. There is a quick help button on our J20. So I'm gonna push that. The quick help is the, the symbol for quick help is the question mark. So I touch the question mark and this is telling me to use my B foot. And if I missed it, I can just touch it again and it's showing me my B foot. Alrighty, well. Thankfully, all of our basic presser feet are lettered in our Who's Front of Viking machines. So I have my A foot and my B foot here, and they pretty much look the same on top. I'm going to flip them over for you so you can see what's different on the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. The A foot, which is to the left, this one over here, that is a very smooth, flat piece. The B foot over here on the right, can you see that it has a tunnel or a groove? It's got like a little divot at the, cut out of the bottom. That is designed that way on purpose to allow for the thickness of the stitch to pass through without wobbling. So if you're doing some decorative stitching and your stitching feels like it's kind of wobbling underneath your foot, it may be that you um, just did not change over to the B foot. So check to see if you have your A foot on, switch over to the B foot and that should take care of any wobbling that you have. So that tunnel is, is the same width as the width of the widest stitch, which is seven millimeters. So it gives you plenty of room for wide decorative stitches. Alrighty, um, let's see. Question, um, let's see. Will these designs be the same as on other Who's Front of Viking or limited to this machine? So the stitches on this machine, you will find them on all the models going up in our product line. So all of the stitches on the J20, you can find in our next grouping, our Opal grouping, our Sapphire machines and on up the line. And let me check out this next question. So the question is, someone tried to use Guterman heavyweight buttonhole thread, but it wouldn't go through the top stitch needle. I would um, ask what size top stitch needle. Top stitch needles do come up to size 16. And it should pass through there because the buttonhole thread, unless, unless possibly, Guterman may make a buttonhole thread that is for hand sewing, that is not designed to work in the machine. So check the label on your thread to make sure it is not restricted to hand use. But I have used some of the jean uh, top stitching thread from Guterman with a size 16 top stitch needle and been able to use, um, use that needle with no problem. So hopefully that will um, answer that question. Thanks, Meredith. All right. Now, let's see. So I, I picked my stitch 37, and I'm going to go ahead and snap on my B foot, double checking that I've got the B and not the A. And 
There's another great feature on our J20, and you'll find this feature on all of our models upwards from J20 um, up the line. And that is we have a start stop button. Now it's it's way down under here, and I know my camera can't quite really get that low to see it, but there's a start stop button. Well, why would you want to use the start stop button when sewing? Well, I'm going to tell you why. You get the best results um, when stitching decorative stitches when you stitch at a very consistent speed. Think about using your cruise control to get very even speed when you're driving. So you always stay, you know, at the speed limit. Well, our start stop function is similar to that on our sewing machines. When I, when I go fast and slow and fast and slow, I don't always get as perfect of a stitch as I'd like. But when I use a consistent speed, I do. To go along with that, we have speed control on the J20. So, we have a plus and a minus. It's right above our stop and stop, stop and start here. And there are actually five speeds. So when you see in my display, it says five, five, and then it will go down to five, four, and five, three, two, and one. I usually, I usually like the middle speed. Five, three is, is good for me, but middle of the road. I don't want my fabric to run away from me. So I start out slow. And if I feel confident, then I go ahead and bump up my speed higher. So let's go ahead and do some stitches. It's a very quiet, smooth sounding machine. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop. I'm also going to engage my needle down button and that's going to drop my needle into my fabric so I can check out my decorative stitch here. And this is not a very interesting decorative stitch. So let's, let's, Pick a different one. So I'll do needle up again, raise my presser foot. Uh, maybe I should have put my reading glasses on to see my stitch pattern. <laughs> so for any of you who have not ever seen the behind the scenes of one of these Facebook lives, we got wires everywhere and camera equipment and all kinds of wonderful things. So let me go ahead and pick stitch 61 for you. Let's try that again. There we go. That's more what I wanted. Just do a couple repeats of this. And I'm going to go ahead and touch my start stop to, to stop it, but I don't know if I finished that repeat. This is a little uh, satin element that has a little point at the beginning and end of it. And I want to make sure I finish my pattern off with a whole stitch. So there is a function on our machine called stop. And it's up here by my needle up, needle down. I'm going to engage that and my light comes on to tell me that I have it engaged. I'm going to continue to run my machine either with my foot control or my start stop. I'm using my start stop. So see how that slows down? And it actually um, ties off the edge for me and finishes my stitch. So I got an entire repeat of that, that little satin element there. I didn't stop halfway through. So again, that is your stop function on the machine. Again, stop function is on all of our machines, beginning with our Jade 20 and up. And I'm going to come back to Meredith and see what other kind of questions we have. Um, someone is asking about changing tension, um, changing the tension her machine selects um, on, on the Opal 670, is this normal? I guess I would have to know more about when, what stitch, what fabric, all of that. The Opal 670 does have a sewing advisor it's very critical that you use the sewing advisor for the input, the fabric, and the type of um, the weight of fabric for what you're going to be doing, because then the machine will either set or tell you to set certain um, things 
um, to get the best results. On the Opal 670, the tension will adjust automatically based on the fabric weight and type you have selected. Okay, let me look at this next question. What about a quilting foot for decorative stitches when sewing through a three-layered quilt? So quilting foot, um, typically to me that means a walking foot. Um, if we can clarify that, that would be wonderful. And let's see, next question. All right, it, it seems that this person is getting a couple loops on the front and has tried a new needle and the machine is clean. You may wanna take a sample of that to your um, sewing machine dealer and get an analysis in person. It's uh, a little challenging to analyze certain machine um, technicalities without seeing the machine in action. So I would suggest visiting your local retailer with a sample, because if you can, if you can take a sample with you, that will make a world of difference. All righty. Uh, yes. Um, for our, our former question, it was a walking foot. So if you are using the interchangeable dual feed foot uh, from who's front of Viking, there is, an open toe decorative foot that will fit on, that will snap onto the bottom of the walking foot. And you can use that for forward motion decorative stitches. So you're not going to use that for stitches that go back and forth and up and down. Anything that's forward motion, that would be fine. You could certainly use that with decorative stitches. And they make a really nice open toe version um, for, for that machine. All righty. Um, moving on then, Not my fabric. let's talk about stabilizer. So for my samples here, I was just using a, a nice tearaway, uh, just a lightweight tearaway. It makes it easy to um, remove later, but I'm going to show you another stabilizer. We'll do a few more stitches here on a different piece of fabric. And I might as well change up my stitch since I have 80 stitches to choose from. You know, there's a lot. So might as well change it up. Now, do note that on um, our machines, sometimes the speed automatically drops when you pick a stitch. And that is because the machine is smarter than we are and it knows that it'll get the best stitch result at a lower speed. So um, if you feel it's not going fast enough and you have your speed all the way up, it probably is set down on purpose. All righty, let this finish. And then I'm gonna come back to our camera so I can hold this up in front of you. So here is another um, decorative stitch. This is a little um, like feathered, set, feathered stitch, a little grass stitch. And I used a stabilizer called Stitch and Ditch. Now Stitch and Ditch kind of reminds me of tissue paper, but it's much stronger than gift wrap tissue paper. It actually has one side that's a little slicker and that's really helpful um, if you have to sew vinyl or something that's kind of gummy, like some of the cosplay fabrics, you can actually use this under just your regular seams to help it go through um, underneath your feed dogs for for the um, for regular stitching. But the wonderful thing about it for decorative stitching is that um, because it's lightweight, you can just simply kind of fold it and rip it away. and you're left with very little stabilizer in the back. And because it's paper, if your item gets laundered, it'll just come out in the wash. But a really nice support for your stitches. All righty, another question. Um, the question is, uh, will Husqvarna be introducing a 
quarter inch Teflon foot. I, I don't know uh, what's down the road as far as feet. Um, however, there is a solution to that. The, um, there are these little yellow stick on Teflon or, not, or glide plates that you can purchase at your dealer and they can be attached to any foot. They can be trimmed to size. So I have one on um, a blind hem foot and I have one on um, my manual buttonhole foot, I believe. So you can trim them to size and uh, that should work for you. If you don't want to take those, those glide plates on and off, I would invest in a second quarter inch piecing foot. So you can always have one with the glide plates on if that's something you frequently use. Okay. All right, let's see, looking for any other questions. I think we're caught up right now. So, all right, back to our J20. And let's see, I wanted to show you that you can also stitch a single pattern at a time. There are some cute designs on the J20. And those designs, you might not want a whole row of bows or hearts or there's a little piece of candy on here. Um, you may just want single designs. You could sprinkle those designs over, um, all over a piece of fabric, um, create embroidered fabric or decorative, decorative fabric to make something out of, whether it's a piece of clothing or a tote bag or an accessory. So I'm going to choose the bow, which is number 54. Oops, I gotta touch it a little quicker, 54, there we go. Now, the key to doing one design and only one design at a time is to turn on the stop function at the very beginning before I start sewing. So I'm, I've touched my stop and my red light is on. I have some stitch and ditch under here. And I'll go ahead and run that stitch. Alrighty, let's see. What did I do here? Oh, I did not pick the right stitch. Oh, I read the line above. I so apologize. Let's try that again. Let's get our piece of candy. This stitch is really quite boring on its own. Oh, well, we all make mistakes. And that's why you want to pre-test all your decorative stitches before you put them on your real project, just to see what it looks like before you get going. So I have touched my stop up here. So it will do one repeat. And you can see it slows down and ties off for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that close. So I have one little motif, one little candy motif. There you go. So then I could put another one at a different angle. Again. You will need to touch that stop every time. If you forget to do your stop and you're still in the first repeat, you can touch your stop and it will, it will engage. So if you get to the very end, you're out of luck. But in the first part of the stitch, you're good. You're good. I just always try to do it at the very beginning so that I don't have any concerns. So. Wouldn't that be cute, scattered all over um, a project for a kid? Um, you could use it for, for anything. You could use it on a little tote bag. You could embellish um, the front of a, of a sundress. It's 90 some degrees here in Northeast Ohio today. So it's like, I'm thinking, you know, cool and sunshine and, and cool weather. So, all righty. Any questions, Meredith? Um, okay, I see a question about can we use the faux feet on Viking? The faux feet that fit the top of the line machines, no. Um, the ankle actually attaches differently. There are some basic faux models, and those feet may. It depends on how old they are, um, but you want to stick with who's front of Viking feet. When you get into things like embroidery hoops, those are usually interchangeable. So, um, and bobbins on the newer groups of machines are interchangeable between the two models. Just have to check your size. Okay. Alrighty. Let's see here. 
next, let me check my time, see how we're doing. All righty. I'm going to come over to our Designer Epic 2 and tell you some more things that you can do with decorative stitches and some different things that you have available on the Designer Epic 2. Now, most of the features I'm going to share with you today on the Designer Epic 2 are also on our original Designer Epic, on our Epic 95Q, our Epic 980Q, as well as our Designer Sapphire 85, our Designer Brilliance 80, and our Designer Ruby 90. So those um, groups of current top of the line and one generation back top of the line machines, many of them have a lot of these same features. If you're not sure, explore your machine. And if it, you're still not sure, um, contact your, your dealer. Stop in and, and maybe take a class, uh, get refreshed um, about all the features on your machine. Okay. Um, before I go over there, I'm going to see if I can answer this question. Okay. Um, so the question is regarding how to sew straight when using Omnimotion stitches. Okay. Uh, Meredith, if I forget to answer that, send me a little reminder in the chat. Okay. Thank you. So then the next question we have is actually an embroidery question. And that has to do with what foot to use for embroidery. There are two feet that you can use for embroidery. The recommended foot by far is the sensor Q foot rather than the R foot. However, it, there are two embroidery feet that you can use. You have to make sure that you tell your machine which foot you're going to use so that it can turn on or off other features that make that foot work properly. If you have a mismatch of the wrong foot with the wrong settings in the machine, your embroidery will not be as good as you hope. Um, that mismatch in settings versus foot that's physically on the machine, they have to be the same. So just caution that. Okay, so uh, let me double check here. I am on my Designer Epic 2 screen. Hopefully you're good on seeing that. And I have pulled up my Joyous Advisor. So my Joyous Advisor is right here on top. It's the little blue sewing machine. I can access it any time from any menu. And I want to look in the Knowledge Center because I might have a question about stabilizers. So in the Knowledge Center, I have information about needles, um, stabilizers, a quick guide. Um, this is where you have a workbook to get you going on different um, techniques, sewing instructions, and an accessory guide. So I'm, I'm on my stabilizer guide, and I have already pre-selected my stitch and ditch. Let me go back so I can show you this close my window there. So once I have my stabilizer guide open, you can see that there are different tabs or different categories of stabilizers and it just spins around and around like a carousel. And Stitch and Ditch, which is the paper stabilizer that I used um, on the J20, um, is categorized as a specialty. So when I tap that, I can read all about Stitch and Ditch and it tells me what it is and how to use it. If that printing is too little, I love this. You can um, increase your font size. You can decrease your font size. So it's it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And we can look at other kinds of stabilizers as well. So we have tearaways, cutaways, uh, water solubles, all kinds of wonderful things. But for now, we're going to just close out of that joyous advisor. And now we're on our regular sewing screen. And yes, you can see my screen. All right. Excuse me just a minute while I change chairs. <laughs> All right. So when we were doing our satin elements on our J20, we just got them the way they were. We can do something a little bit um, more refined on our top of the line machines. And that is we can adjust our stitch density. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get my stitch on screen. So I picked a stitch from the C menu. It's number 34, some little hearts. Now I'm going to get a pop-up warning um, because this is a nine millimeter machine. I can use some of my older feet from my older Bruce Barna Viking machine 
that are only seven millimeters. So it's a caution, so I don't break my needles. However, I do have on um, the proper foot for nine millimeter today. So I always thank the machine for that reminder because it really helps out. So I have picked um, a heart stitch. It's a little satin stitch. And if we look down here to, at the bottom, we can see the, the information about this stitch. It has a stitch width of 4.0 and a stitch length of 6.9. And it's showing that I'm using my deluxe, deluxe stitch system rather than my tensioning. And the deluxe stitch system measures out my thread for me. So I get a really nice result um, as it goes through. It's always constantly adjusting the thickness of my fabric and and how what thickness my thread is as I sew. What I want to share with you is that there are these little toggle switches on some of our um, choice selections. And on our stitch length icon here, I want to I want to slide down that little toggle here, and you can see that it now says zero point zero point two. I had to get a little closer to read that. And it has a different icon below it, some little hash lines that they get closer together. So that is density. Now, again, my machine is smart. It has a quick help up at the top. I have a little question mark if I touch that. And then I touch on here. It tells me that this is indeed stitch density. And it tells me that I can touch the plus or minus to adjust the density of the satin stitch. The density does not affect this actual length of the entire stitch. And if I need to know even more about stitch density, if I touch on this bar here, it will open up my built-in on-screen manual and give me the full story about stitch density. But we don't need that today. I'm just gonna do a check mark here. So if I do minus, it lets me go to minus one, but it doesn't let me go any lower than that because it, it knows better. If I went to a density of zero, it would be too dense for me to stitch out nicely. Notice that the stitch um, indicator, the 0.1 is now a turquoise color. And that's because I've changed it off of the default setting. If I pop a plus up here to two, you see it returns to the normal color on my screen. And if I increase this, I'm just gonna go up quite a ways. I want you to see my screen up here. Do you see how my hearts are really spreading out? I've got the density way up to like 0.8 now. Looks more like a, um, a heart rhythm chart than a heart anymore. Uh, so that's not going to be a very nice stitch for what I want. So point four looks good. And I stitched a little sample out for you. Let me move my camera over here. I think you can see it better here. So the stitch in the middle, the line in the middle, is the default density of two. The stitch to the right is a stitch density of one. So you can see that my hearts are more dense. And then on the left side, I used a density of four. So there's quite a difference in there. Now you might be wondering why, why do we have this adjustment? Well, sometimes different fabric textures or weights you may want to adjust the density. You may want the look of a little satin heart, but your fabric is maybe a stretch knit or it's kind of loosely woven and you want the heart to look nice. So you might want to increase um, that stitch density to give you a little bit more um, thread coverage. Or if you're using a very coarse fabric, you may need to actually open the density a little bit more. Always test your sample on the actual fabric with the stable as you plan to use, and then make your adjustments according to what looks the best to you. Okay. All right, let me come back and look at for questions. Um, so this is a great guide. Are they available in print? So meaning the um, guides that are built into the top of the line machines, I assume, Meredith. They are not in print. However, there is a lot of information in the free uh, Joy of Sewing app that you can get on your smartphone from the App Store for both Apple and Android. You can download the um, Joyous Advisor app. And there's a 
ton of information in that app. So it, you can read it on your phone and then apply what you learn to a machine that doesn't have it built in on screen. All right. Okay. So. All right. Now, I wanted to share with you another stabilizer that you might want to use to embroider on something that is unusual. So, ribbon. Just a roll of ribbon from a big box store. And I want to put decorative stitches on this ribbon. Well, it's thin and flimsy and, um, you know, just a challenge to work with. So I have a little solution for you. How would you like to be able to make ribbon that is stiff? Here's the two side by side. Let's see if I can get them up here. You can, this one here is the one I have stiffened and this one is the right off the spool. So this is just a single piece Nice and stiff, right? It's like cardstock. It's really easy to do. You will need some Aqua Magic Stabilizer, which is an embroidery stabilizer. And if you have an embroidery machine, great. And you've made any freestanding lace, you probably have scraps of Aqua Magic. So Aqua Magic is a water soluble stabilizer, dissolves in warm water, and you can have different degrees of stiffness with it, depending on how much of it you rinse out of your end product. But I just save my scraps from making freestanding lace and put them in a Ziploc bag because uh, the humidity will kind of sometimes make it tacky and stick together. But for what we want to do, we're going to turn this into like a, a solution. So I made this earlier, still kind of liquidy. So I just took up, I took a ceramic bowl and I put some pieces of Aqua Magic and then I added a little bit of warm water at a time. I don't know if you can see this consistency. Um, and I made a gel. So it's sort of like jello that hasn't set yet, which is fine. This is just one of those 99 cent sponge brushes. And I dipped my ribbon in my solution. Now, when I, I can't do this on camera because I'll get all messy and I, and I won't be able to finish for you, but I stick my ribbon or other soft fabric. I've also stitched on organza like this. Of course, I use a really big bowl um, and make a lot of solution. And there's no exact recipe, just like the consistency of un, um, unsolidified jello. That's, that's my consistency I use. I can paint it on my ribbons. I can dip my ribbons in the, in the solution. And I strip off the extra solution. I lay, if it's ribbon, I lay my ribbon on pieces of wax paper just out on a table. Let them dry. I usually let them dry overnight and they get all kind of crinkly. Iron them with no steam and they, they turn out like the ribbon I showed you. They turn out like this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pick a stitch to stitch on this ribbon for you. We don't need any other stabilizer. And let's see, menu H is where my little ducks are. And design number 16, scroll past it, 15, 16. There's my little duck. Okay. Now it's telling me to use my B foot, which I do have on my machine. But I have another foot that I really like when I want to see more. And that's the open toe foot. So let me hold it there for you. Now this open toe foot has a cutout in back because it's designed to work with the IDF system. If you do not have a machine with the IDF, you won't have that cutout in back. It currently comes in metal for IDF, but it's also available in a clear version for the seven millimeter wide stitches. So it comes in two sizes um, currently for seven and nine millimeter, and it comes in regular or IDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my machine, and I think you'll see why. It provides so much more whoops, visibility. Oops, my camera there. Okay. Provides so much more visibility when I have my fabric than the B foot does. You can see I don't have that, that um, bar across. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. There we go. 
All right, so I'm going to use this foot. Now, I played with the stitch earlier, and I could I could guide this. I could figure out, you know, exactly, you know, well, I need a little bit over to the right and the left of my foot. Let me lower my foot there to hold it in place. Or what I could do is I could use my, my laser. My designer Epic 2 and our Epic 95Q both have our laser. And it is a sewing laser only. I just turned it on the little, little icons up here at the top. You can see the red light on it. And it is adjustable as far as its position. I'm going to swing over to the screen again. So you can see that. So right here is my adjustability. I have it set on 11 to the right because I already figured out ahead of time that's where I want it so my ducks end up in the middle. But I can move it up to 30 millimeters to the right and 30 millimeters to the left. I can also adjust my intensity. So I have it turned all the way up to make it easy for you to see. But sometimes that's a little bright um, when I'm sewing typically. Um, so that is adjustable to your preference. Come back over here. And I think I'm going to check the questions before I stitch. stitch. Um, question is, does the Aqua Magic take the shine away from the ribbon? No. When you are done stitching, you're going to rinse your ribbon and your shine will come right back. And focus the needle area. Okay, let's see here. The focus is a little touchy. Let's see if that's any better. I think that's worse. Okay, I think that's as good as I can get it, guys. Thank you. So um, again, my laser is, um, I'm going to guide the edge of my ribbon against the laser. So that's gonna keep me on track. I am also going to use um, my start stop. So I have consistent speed and I will go ahead and touch my run button. It's amazing how well the Aquamagic works on ribbons. I've done it on grain ribbons, on heavy ribbons, thin ribbons, organza ribbons, lots of different things. And let me touch my stop so I finish one duck. And use my selective thread cutter, cut my threads. All right. So there are my, my ducks. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Then you just have to rinse out the, the Aqua Magic, and then your ribbon will be soft again. Now, if I was doing a ribbon project where I would potentially see the back side of the ribbon, which is my upper ribbon here. I would go ahead and fill a bobbin with matching embroidery thread. So for this one, I have filled, can't find myself in the camera, there we go. I have filled a bobbin with um, matching embroidery thread so that I have the same thread on the top of the bottom. It just looks nicer um, if you're going to do something where the back side of your ribbon might show. If the back side of your ribbon is not going to show, you can go ahead and, and use your bobbin thread in the bottom and you will be fine. So either way. Okay. So that's a cool use for the scraps of Aqua Magic. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you can still buy some Aqua Magic. Just buy a small roll. You don't need a lot. And you can make your own, um, your own uh, stabilizer that you can use on, on sheer and delicate fabric. Okay, so let me come back to you all. Check on our questions. All right, I guess we're good on our questions. And let me check our time. Okay, I wanna show you, for those of you that do have an embroidery machine, there's another way to do decorative stitches. Let me get a zoom out a little bit. Um, let me refocus this. So even though I don't have an embroidery arm attached to my machine, on our, Saf on our designer Sapphire 85 and on our designer Ruby 90 and our designer Epic 2, 
and then the prior generation, you can still go into sewing mode or go into embroidery mode. So that's what I'm going to do. Because if I want to do rows and rows and rows of decorative stitches, there's a foot that'll make that easier. But I wanted to show you that you can actually bring in stitches into the hoop. So let me let me select everything here and get rid of it because that's my design I stitched up for you ahead of time. So I'm in embroidery edit mode. I'm going to go to my stitches and go to a menu of whatever menu you'd like to go to and pick a stitch. I'll pick the stitch. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put it in program mode so I have multiples. Let me do that first. So let me go into program mode. I'm going to clear out the fixes on the program mode because I don't want my embroidery machine to stop every time. I just want it to stitch all the way through. So then I'll pick my stitch and I have a shortcut here, a copy button that I can tell it how many copies of the design I'd like to put in. I'm going to put in eight copies of the design. I'm going to do my check mark and that brings it onto my embroidery surface. And I need a little bit more than just that. So let me find something else in another menu. How about some ice cream cones? And again, I'll go to program mode and bring those in. Well, we'll bring in these little uh, sort of figure eights and copy. And let's see, let me bring in about four of those. Okay, that should work. And then I can adjust, let me hide my current stitches. I can adjust this however I'd like. And if I want to do a repeating pattern, I can copy and paste and move them around. Now I've got alignment tools and all kinds of good things I can um, choose to help me out, but I don't want to um, spend too much time on this because I already did a sample for you. But this is a neat way to create rows and rows of decorative stitches. You can now save this to your cloud or save it to a USB stick. And then you can bring the file up at any time and go ahead and stitch it out in the embroidery hoop. So let me grab a couple things and I'm gonna come back to you. And then Meredith, I wanna make sure I get that Omnimotion question answered. So, all right, so you're back seeing me. This is the design I programmed earlier and stitched out for you. So this is just two different rows and I just spaced them out. But it's an easy way to get a lot of stitches um, extremely accurately placed. You can do as long as your hoop space allows. So if your longest hoop is a 360 millimeter hoop, you can go ahead and do 360 millimeters at a time, or you can just do a small amount. Perhaps you wanted to, um, maybe you're going to make a, a garment or you're going to say a cuff on a, on a blouse and you want to embroider decorative stitches on the cuff. You can actually embroider your fabric before you cut out your pattern piece and then cut your pattern piece out from your decorative, decorative fabric and you're ready to go couldn't be easier than that. Or think about a pocket on a purse or a pocket on uh, a child, child's piece of clothing, anything you like. We have so many decorative stitches that, um, you know, it's absolutely endless. So if you don't want to sew like something for a garment, you could also just, also just make some artwork. So this is some really tight together stitches I did. It's a little busy, but you can see my little figure eights and my butterflies. And it's just mounted on a arch canvas. So it's just embroidered in the hoop and then on your arch canvas. Okay. So, um, all right. So the Omni Motion stitches. Let me show you one more stitches in the hoop. I did, I was on a heart theme and I wanted to find every heart stitch I could find in my sewing machine. So I found all of these stitches and I stitched them out in the hoop. So you can have a lot of fun playing with your decorative stitches. And now let me go back over 
to the Epic, and I'm going to show you another foot. I'm going to cancel out of my embroidery items here because we're not going to embroider. But isn't that cool that I can actually set up my embroidery without my embroidery arm being attached? Of course, I could sew with the embroidery arm attached um, with the Designer Epic 2, but it was um, better for me space-wise to not do that today. So I want to go to sewing mode. And the Omnimotion stitches are in menu K on the Designer Epic 2 and the Epic 95Q. Omnimotion stitches, for those of you that don't know, are stitches that are much wider than the opening, the throat opening on your plate. So this um, particular one is 40 millimeters um, in length and 17 millimeters in width. So that's much wider than our nine millimeter wide. The laser pictogram, the laser light is a huge help for working with the, um, pick, uh, with the Omnimotion stitches. However, not all machines have the laser light. So if you don't have the laser light, uh, this foot, I realize you can't see me. Sorry about that, guys. So this foot here, let me hold it against some fabric so you can see it better. This is a multi-line decorative foot. It looks a lot like the S foot, which is what is recommended for Omnimotion stitches. The S foot is a super wide foot, and it's wide to cover going side to side as the machine stitches. But you could use the multi-line decorative foot um, in place of your S foot um, for doing Omnimotion stitches. So let me go ahead and snap that on. And I always like to have a reference line, um, even if it's just a crease when doing Omnimotion stitches. So let me turn my laser off just so you can see here. Let me lower my foot to hold everything in place. There we go. And try to get you in a little bit closer. There we go. stitching one repeat and then I'll stop and explain some things that will make it easier for you. So I intentionally stitched just one repeat of that um, because my goal when stitching an Omnimotion stitch is to keep my foot parallel to my line, whether it's a drawn or pressed line, or if I'm using my laser, I'm my goal is to keep my laser parallel to my line. When you just do one repeat of, at a time of an Omnimotion stitch, you can make very slight corrections to the position of your stitch so that you don't end up with a big curve in your stitch as you go on. So doing one stitch at a time, again, I'm keeping my laser or my foot parallel to my marked line or my crease as it makes this stitch. So I'm always, I'm just doing some gentle guiding. I am not forcing it. I just want to do the gentle guiding to keep it on track. So if you do not have a machine that has the laser, then I would recommend getting the multi-line decorative foot to get better results with your Omnimotion stitches. Omnim Omnimotion stitches are great because they are, they're nice and big. You can use them on quilt borders. Let me bring them onto this camera. I think you can see a little bit better. So this is the multi-line decorative foot. You can use it in place of your S foot for Omnimotion stitches. And you can see where I put a crease in. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Some other, let me come back to, can you make, um, let me skip back. Is there a way to save embroidery files to the cloud from a computer? If you are working in my Sonet software um, and you want to save them to a cloud, you can send them to the cloud, yes. Next question is, can you make a single run into a triple run stitch on any of these? Um, I assume you're referring to the Omnimotion stitches. No, you can't change. They are what they are as far as the way the stitch is formed. So if it's a single stitch, it's a single stitch. If it's a double or triple, it's a double or triple. And do I shut off the cutter when I stitch out decorative stitches in embroidery mode? I don't need to, as long as I remember to remove when I first start to program them, if I remove the fix and the stop, then it'll start beginning to end and it won't stop. It'll just run the whole entire thing with no, no cuts in the back. It'll just trail my thread from end to end. So it stitches out really nice and really easy. Let's see. Um, um, all right, um, there's a question I don't understand. So perhaps Meredith, afterwards we can um, figure out what that question means and then we'll come back in and answer it on, on the chat and follow up with that. I wanna thank you for joining me today. I've really enjoyed being with you and exploring some different decorative stitches and options on different machines. And I wanna remind you too that our next, um, my Sonet Facebook Live is, well, let me jump back a little bit. Um, our next Husqvarna Viking Facebook Live is July the 6th at 2 p.m. Central Time. So convert that to where you live. That is going to be with Amy McMullen. She is a fantastic lady. She's so full of energy. Um, Amy works for us at our corporate office doing um, dealer trainings. And she's going to be going over tips and techniques for sewing with your exclusive stitches. So she's going to just kind of probably pick up where I left off. We didn't get into too much as far as exclusive stitches go. Um, because she's going to take on that. And then we have a My Sonet Facebook Live coming up um, the following Wednesday on the 13th of July. And that's going to be Wendy Owens. She's also one of our new um, event specialists. And she is going to continue on with digitizing applique with My Sonet. So if you caught our My Sonet uh, Facebook Live last week, um, she touched a little bit on um digitizing for applique and she's going to continue that conversation next week so again thank you everyone for uh joining me and if you have questions please use your dealer for resources reach out to your local retailer they are happy to help you and again you can leave us questions and we will come back to you with answers thanks have a great afternoon everyone